Part 3 out of a 4 part video series showing how to use SOLIDWORKS Motion to simulate a packaging machine. In this part, the event based motion study will be created. Start SOLIDWORKS and open the assembly and motion study that was created in the second part of this series. That assembly can also be found at the bottom of this post. Make sure that SOLIDWORKS Motion is added in. Click the motion study tab that was created in the last part in order to open it. The spring constant that had to be calculated in the last part is 1.8889 pound force per inch. This was found by adding the weights of the box, plate, lid, and balance plate and dividing it by the travel distance of the balance plate, which is about 9 inches. The mass of those parts can easily be determined by using the mass properties tool in the evaluate tab of the command manager. The free length of the spring is 18 0.4387 inches. This was calculated by using the spring constant and the weight of the balance plate to determine the amount that the spring compresses due to the weight of the plate. This was then added to the default length of 16.8875 inches, which was provided when the spring was created. The new free length of the spring makes sure that the balance plate will sit even with the top of the conveyor. Drag the top key of the motion study so it is on 32 seconds. This will be the length of the motion simulation. In the far upper right corner of the motion study pane, select the event-based motion icon. Click on, click here to add in order to add the first step. In this step, we will set all of the motors except for the one on the box to have a displacement of zero inches. This is so that they will not initially start moving. Leave the trigger as time and set the time slash delay equal to 0 seconds. Click the symbol with three dots under the features heading and under the motors heading select all the motors except for the one in the box. Click OK. Under the action heading select change from the drop down. Set the value and the duration both to 0. Add a new step. For the trigger select the first proximity sensor. This is the sensor that is below the plate. A delay will need to be added in order to make sure that the box is centered underneath the plate. The delays will be calculated out at the end. Under the Features tab, select the two motors that are associated with the two releasing plates under the plate part. Set the action to change and set the value to 5.5 inches. Also, set the duration to 0.55 seconds. Add another step and set the trigger to be Task 2 which corresponds to the sensor task. Set the condition to task end so that this step will start after the previous one finishes. Add a delay of 0.2 seconds to allow the plate enough time to fall past the releasing plates. For the features, select the two motors associated with the releasing plates that were chosen in the last step. Set the action to change. Set the values to negative 5.5 inches and the duration to 0.55 seconds. This will close the releasing plates. Add another task that is triggered with the sensor below the lid. Select the two motors associated with the releasing plates under the lid. Set the value to 6.5 inches and the duration to 0.65 seconds. Add a task to close the releasing plate. Make sure that the value is set to negative 6.5 inches and there is a delay of 0.2 seconds. Add a final task that has a time trigger of 28 seconds. Under the Features tab, select the motor on the box. For the action, select Off. This will simulate the box reaching the end of the conveyor belt. All of the needed tasks have been created. Double check to see if your setup matches the one shown. All that is missing is to add the delays for task 2 and 4 in order to coordinate all the movements. These can be calculated out using some basic physics. These values will be left up to you to calculate and will be shown and explained in the next video. A hint to help with these calculations is to determine the amount of time it will take from when the box triggers the sensor to when the box is centered under the plate. Also determine the time it will take for the plate and the lid, starting at the top of the releasing plates, to fall and reach the level of the top of the box.
Use these values along with the durations of the tasks in order to calculate out the delays. While determining these values, the simulation can be calculated by clicking the Calculate icon in the upper left of the motion pane. Once the study is complete, the study can be run by selecting Play icon or the Play from Start icon. Make sure you save your model. In the final video, a complete event-based motion with all of the delays added in will be shown as well as the calculations for those delays. Result plots will also be calculated.